Ingre is going to be another student of David. He uses flat, fairly linear forms to best recreate his idea of the classical form. So his idea is by focusing on really the composition. So he's not modeling his forms quite the same way that we've seen others. This is really the opposite of the tenebrism that we saw from the Baroque. But he's trying to do this to best capture these classical forms that he's looking at for inspiration. He also frequently places the figures in the foreground in this very neoclassical style, even though much of what he's doing is kind of a cross between what we would term neoclassical and what we will later term romantic. Now, we're going to be looking at his Apothis of Homer. Now, the Apothis of Homer is again this idea of bringing the great people of history together, in this case, uh, primarily literary figures, artistic figures together, rather than Raphael's School of Athens, which were primarily philosophers. The piece will be exhibited at the Salon of 1827. Now, these Salons are going to be official art exhibitions. They happen between about 1748 and 1890. And these are massive public affairs where artists really get to be known. These happen annually or biennially in Paris, and they're frequently open to the public. So in other words, the public can go in and see all of the changes that are taking place in the artistic world. Now, this creates an ongoing arms race or competition in France, which is why we're going to see so much amazing French art come out of these shows. But moving on. What we see in the Apothis of Homer is a singular statement of ideal form and neoclassical taste. It will be inspired by Raphael's School of Athens. Very similar idea. And here, Homer is receiving a crown from fame or a personification of fame with female personifications in the front of the Iliad and the Odyssey at his feet. He is surrounded by philosophers, artists, poets, and thinkers of the classical and contemporary world, including Plato, Socrates, Raphael, Shakespeare, and Voltaire. Now, this is really going to tell us a great deal about neoclassical taste. Because when Raphael does it in the School of Athens, not everyone is dressed well in the classical form. We have people in fairly contemporary clothing, whereas here, most people are in that classical form. The figures have been idealized, even those who might not have ideal bodies. You can't imagine Shakespeare, for example, necessarily having an ideal body, yet that's taking place here. And between the background, the personifications, the forms, and that focus on Homer, we really get a sense for that neoclassical taste. Even adding to that, the Iliad in red with the sword and the Odyssey in green with the paddle, giving us a sense that Ingre really knows what's in those texts. And Ingre is familiar with all of these and that educated French viewers would be familiar with all of these things. This painting becomes a way to show off your knowledge. You would stand in front of it and say, I know who this guy is, and I know who this person is, and I know who this person is, based on what they're holding, or how they're standing, or any number of other situations. Now, the work took years, as in Gray was determined, uh, had to determine who to include in the work, which is really difficult. If you sit there and you go, okay, I'm going to have, say, 25 figures, who are they going to be? Well, now, how do you figure that out? How do you figure out who's the 20, who are the greatest 25 thinkers in these areas? It becomes particularly difficult. I mean, look at how often BuzzFeed and Cracked and others have to put out top 10 lists for basically the same thing.